Hey Twitch fam, happy Wednesday. Wednesday, woo, hump day, but not really, because ain't none of us doing none of that. No kind of way, that's way too big of a screen. So hold on a second. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm like, that box is just a little too big. So I wanna make sure I get that right, hold on. Actually wait, all I gotta do is this. And this. Dang, why's my camera off? Hold on, y'all, hold on. Yeah. I'm sitting like super far. Hold on. We'll see if that helps. Hmm. There we go. Alright. That's better. That's better. All right, y'all, how y'all doing this happy Wednesday? So this week's topic, well, we just started at the beginning. We got a little bit of music going on here, but I might turn it down just a touch more. Um, we are running Spotify, so if you're looking, if you wanna know what's playing, it's down in the panel below. Um, I got my trusty, dusty Ball Boy notebook tonight going on with today's episode. So, here we go. Hope you guys are ready for some good times. I gotta get set up here now. So, a little bit about what's going on here on Wednesdays. You guys know Wednesdays are building up conversation days. Building up conversations is our social skills, community, mental health, chill, and chill, just chill talking about real life shit conversation day. Of course, as you know, rules about that are down below in the panels. And uh, we are going to get started as soon as we load up what we're doing. Today we're doing 10 Pines Bluff. Um, I kind of been stalling on that one because I never ever really know what I want to do when I'm building that camp because that camp is not really a very big camp, but at the same time, it's one of those camps that doesn't have like, that has plenty of room to do something with. So, I'm with my Nuka Girl water cup. And we gonna get this party started. And I'm hoping that y'all have any questions or thoughts or concerns, you feel free to leave in the thing. Hello, Green Top Nursery. Oops. Let's move on up. To the east side. Oh, there are people there. Hey. <laughs> I'll be that kid too big. Let me just uh, take that. I'll be taking that, thank you. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at today and we're going to talk a little bit about emotional intelligence um layman's terms because some of y'all who know about emotional intelligence know like the hella long ass versions and they're you don't necessarily need all that extra so this is our current so i'm gonna show you guys what i'm currently rocking um yes i am using mods um, we were using the clean and smooth mod for Ten Pines Bluff because the center was kind of meh and I didn't really necessarily was feeling it versus now we've kind of got this nice little setup going on here and now we're going to get build it, get to build them. But first, as with all things, we got to start with the talk. So, and I need that paperweight. Where'd that paperweight go? You know you have a paperweight and you didn't realize you forgot to put it in prior before you start your streams, y'all. I know some of y'all have this problem too. Please forgive me while I get it set up. Um, some days when I be planning topics, I be waiting until literally the last minute to write them. So, some days that means you're just pulling it off, off your notebooks and go from there. Alright. Ah. Paper. So also what happens when you don't have one of those like really cool caddies. I gotta work on. Okay. So, Wikipedia, which is, you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica of today, talks about emotional intelligence and. Oh, just as your phone. Oops. Oops, phone. <laughs> you gotta love your tech when it fails, even when it's like. Not being user friendly, you gotta love it. Emotional intelligence, emotional is also known as a form of emotional is also can be known as emotional leadership, 
emotional quotient, that's EQ, which is like kind of like, like how it's the emotional side of IQ, and emotional intelligence quotients, which is also known as EIQ, are the capability of individuals to recognize their own emotions and those of others, discern between different feelings and label them appropriately, use, these, use this emotional information to appropriately guide thinking and behavior, and manage and or adjust emotions to adapt to the environments in order to achieve one's goals. Yeah, that was a really long definition, but here's the layman's version. There's four aspects to emotional intelligence. First is to be able to recognize our feelings and the feelings of others. Yes, this means you got to know what you have to know what you're feeling besides I'm just pissed off or I'm just, you know, sad. Well, what does that look like to you? Does sad look like actually I'm just going through a bad funk or or I'm just having the blues or is this looking like I'm hopeless sad and I'm, I'm depressed sad I'm in grief sad because there are different levels of sadness and there are different levels of said belief in sadness and there is glare on the screen that I'm going to fix now because it's going to drive me nuts otherwise I forget when you're doing natural light some days it's not your user friendliness it's a little better we can live with that y'all can live with some shadows it, it's three it's two o'clock in the afternoon here the second part is to discern the difference between them so these first part goes hand in hand if there has to be there is a difference between being in grief sad and being depressed sad there is a difference between being hopeless sad and i just got the blues because i got a rough i had a rough day sad um, and it's important to understand the differences between those and they're usually the way of discerning those two pieces the biggest the easiest way to do it is which one are you feeling longer usually the longer you feel sad the more and more it actually turns out to be something different and, and, and that's okay if it's something different sometimes we need to discern and figure out for ourselves what does that different look like to us in our head spaces huh okay the third part is to use and guide these behaviors and actions. So you have these feelings and you're under, you are aware of what kind of power entails with them, but you're not quite sure how you want to go about that. So, or you know what you want to do with these feelings. You want to ignore them or you want to work past them or work through them. And there's many different ways. Not all of them are correct, but there are many different ways one can use one can have to grow their extension. Oh no, I want it over here actually. Take that back because there's no attacks on this side. There's no spawn point. Okay. Uh, oh wait, that's not gonna work because there's no space over here. So, and then lastly, to adjust up to your environment accordingly. So adjusting to your environment means exactly that. Meaning you take what you've learned you take what's going on and your situations with what's going on and you make sure that that's accorded that's set up in accordance to what you need um however adjusting to an environment accordingly doesn't necessarily mean emotional ma manipulation and we'll talk more about emotional manipulation in a little bit and what that entails and how that looks because that look is going to determine it determines a lot more of what you want and how you want to go about it okay i'm gonna put a couple here That should be, that should be good. All right. Um, so, what is emotional intelligence not? Emotional intelligence is not to be used, of course, as a form of a manipulation technique. And we'll talk more about that when we get towards talking about emotional manipulation. And yeah, that's too dark now, too. No oh, cameras. <laughs> I know, you guys, I know. I really should go on ahead and get some bigger and get some better lighting, get some better setups, but that requires money that I don't have right now. If you're interested in helping me fix my lighting and camera situation, go down into donations and click on the donate tab so we can uh, get some better, some better gear. I'd really appreciate that. All right, back at it. So it's definitely not meant to be used as a form of manipulation. Um, Although sometimes it is, and we'll talk about that in a bit. It's not, as an, it's not to be used as an excuse to be over emotional. So just because you're cognizant of your feelings, that's not a justification for you to get like super melodramatic. It's just not sorry, guys. Sorry, bros and ladies. I know that, you know, so, and you know, we ladies are infamous for the over emotional piece 
many times we don't realize we're being over emotional it's or we are aware that we're being over emotional and we really got no one's really kind of keeping ourselves in check let alone keeping anybody else in check and of course that emotional intelligence is not to be used as a substitution for therapeutic methods of dealing with trauma this is fancy way of saying this ain't your your one all be all to be to not going to a therapist or not going to a group meeting or not going to any other form of therapeutic model that will help you deal with the roots of your emotional intelligence or lack thereof like there are plenty of ways to go about it you know there are still plenty of good non-medical therapeutic options for people who may be struggling with social skills. There's this thing called Toastmasters. I love Toastmasters. I don't, they would hate me though. I'm pretty sure they hate, well, I don't think they hate me. Most of my friends who are in Toastmasters, like we love each other very, very much because we are very aware and cognizant of, our, of who and what we are and what we do. But they know that I would talk their ear off and they'd be kind of mad at me. So that's why I'm saying, I don't know about that. But there's like Toastmasters and Codependency Alliance. Um, there's, there, or excuse me, Codependency Anonymous, or CODA for short, or there's NAMI support groups for people who are suffering from strategic mental illnesses. Um, hi, Preston. Actually, you know what? I'm actually gonna send you that question Mojo because there's nobody there, and I'd rather you go over there. Um, that'll probably be next week's build out. As you can see here, oh, by the way, um, before I carry on with the next piece, uh, I put two small shacks here. This is not going to be a big camp. I kind of wanted to keep it a little simpler, but I put two so that way we have at least enough room for 10 people. Um, that's my rule of thumb is I always, for smaller settlements like farming settlements, I only want like let more, no more than 10. And here's going to be where we put our bar. It's gonna, yeah, the bar's always here. And then I'm going to actually store all these and put a craft station back here um so that's the game plan I don't intend to do much with the settlement only because the settlement is kind of a uh, again it's a farmer settlement this isn't was never built it has never been built to be something bigger or crazier nor do I want it to be bigger and crazier I know some people are like let me go ham and I'm like mm, no 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 you don't have to go ham in fact it's better you don't go ham when you're building out settlements like stuff like this because you know, and it's just a simpler is better policy, and we're gonna move these back towards the back. Um, just because reasons. I can't go that far. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we still leave a little bit of power out here, so that way, I don't know if I want to put one. I don't think we're gonna need anything else out here on this side. I'm gonna put some water. Okay. Um, defense is built. We'll go back to that. Um, talk about water. So. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, what does emotional intelligence, how does that play out in, like, our real lives? Okay, well, first of all, there's five ways that that kind of shows up. And if you're lacking in any one of these five, let me give you a red, this is your opportunity now to really sit down and, like, think about it. Because, go up. Because it's important that to, in or, this whole thing is to know thyself is to truly be a true master. To know others is a wonderful thing, but to know thyself is truly a great thing, is even greater. And it's not letting me get in. So, there we go. So, there we go. Alright, cool. Um, the first is, is show your emotional intelligence is measured. Um, it, how it plays out is in forms of measurements because, you know, science and shit, right? And it's measured in a couple of ways. The first and major way it is actually measured is through self-awareness. To know thyself is to own thine self. Meaning, and what does self-awareness really mean? It means you know what you're doing. You know where you're, how you're feeling and why you're feeling this way and what are you planning on and how you are planning on handling said whatever you're feeling. Because it can vary. Some people need something really quick. Cool. Some people only need like need like one or two things and some people need tons of things. And it's just really dependent on what their needs emotionally are. Some people need that intimacy and that more time to speak and think. Some people can fight rapid fire and just be like, I'm ready, let's go, kick some ass, take names, right? And that's fine too. But in order for, but you have to be aware of yourself 
and why you do the things you do and why you say and do behave the way you do about certain things in order for that to be truly made manifest. Feel me, y'all? Feel me? All right, cool. Uh, no, I, wanna move. I just want to move this thing. Okay, move. Move, Preston, move. Thank you. No, no, they're going to be mean about it. No. All right, then. I don't know how this is going to work. That's just... <laughs> Whoa. Now we know why we... Now y'all know why we offset that. Now I remember why I offset this, because it didn't sit flush. Dang it. Um... Okay, we'll have to play with this again in a second. But, so, that's self awareness. Self-regulation is the ability to control our emotions, especially the disruptive ones. Um, we don't go from zero to a thousand. That's my infamous one. Is Those who have self-regulation skills are able to soothe themselves when they're angry. Or not, or prevent themselves from doing something ang like out of anger. So, um, self-regulation also helps those who are anxious because they're trying to those who are anxious present themselves in a form and a fashion such as let me just uh, not be anxious by doing these things such as grounding techniques, um, taking walks, escapism, etc, etc. Um, those who are depressed use self-regulation in the sense of, well, what have I done to better myself today? Am I making sure I've taken my medications? Have I made sure to handle this and that? Am I able to, have I talked to somebody about these situations? Am I, am I following my, my treatment plans to the best of my ability? Sometimes we don't. And this is not a dig on those of us who are struggling with that piece, but it is. Some people think that, you know, they don't need ad additional behavior therapies to become better people. They think, oh, we can just be this way. We can just be this way. And that's the way it goes. And fuck with everyone else. When really, you're denying yourself the ability to have proper self-regulation skills. We also call self-regulation coping skills. Coping skills. Um... And you've probably heard coping skills a lot faster, more than self-regulation, um, because coping skills sometimes are quick. I, and I like to put it like this, self-regulation is a longer version of coping skills. Coping skills is what you do in the minute or in the instance that that emotion is hitting you like a ton of bricks. The self-regulation piece is where you're like bringing yourself to back to stable and or keeping yourself as stable as possible. And you do that through your coping skills. Okay, so not the third way we measure Emotional intelligence is how are your relationships? Yeah, you know, the R word here. No one likes the R word, um, especially in gaming. Uh, I mean, that's the whole reason why many of us uh, come into gaming, to be real. We don't, wanna, we don't really want to have relationships in our real life sometimes. But what we fail to forget is when you're playing with people, other, especially if you are an MMO or MMO player, you, you don't escape that no way you know how you don't escape other people now some people are just no good at uh doing certain things and some people are no good at certain types of uh, certain types of issues such as conflict management or um conflict resolution and in those cases that's actually a little different that just requires us as a community to teach better and to help others be better conflict managers and it also requires us to not treat each other like ass dips all the time. Which is sometimes the actual realer challenge, not necessarily are we like good, you know? Not as, um, people who sit here, and so I'm gonna say something really unpopular. People who sit here and say that just because I have a learning disorder or a learning disability means I have permanent bad social skills. That's garbage, absolute garbage. You can correct your social skills. Your disability does not define your ability to maintain res successful relationships. It makes it harder, yes. But that just means you as a human being have to be willing and able to make the necessary changes to in order to adapt to your disabilities. But to say that it, unless, unless you're mute, then that's different. And even if you're mute, there's this beautiful thing called American Sign Language, where you can still openly communi communicate with somebody. So it's hard for me to buy the, the argument for, especially 
those who suffer from severe anxiety and from, from severe and, and or who are on the spectrum, there are behavioral treatments now. For those who are suffering with serious learning disabilities and and serious situations such as autism and um, what's the other one hypersensitivity and um, sensory processing issues, all of those are treatable now, and many of it is behavioral too. So it's not like you're going to sit here and take medications and be mind dumb. Thank goodness, because back in the even ten years ago, our answer to everything was medications, and now I think we're realizing as a society. Eh, drugs only cover so much. The rest of it we have to start learning and growing ourselves in. And learning as a community how not to be toxic and therefore breed bad behavior, behaviors just because they're based off our own inadequacies. Now, that's a whole different argument for a different episode, which is not what we're here to talk about today. So, that's where our social skills kind of plays in. And for us not, and those of us who are in non, who don't have disabilities, how are your relationships? Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they responsive? Are they not responsive? Who are, what kind of people do you have in your life? Do you have people in your life who really promote your, who accept you for who you are and want you to do and be the best you can be? Because if you don't, mm. And I will say this too, there are always gonna be people who look like they're on your team, but in real fact life, they're not on your team, dude. They may just be there for, they're going to be there for a minute to get what they need for themselves and then dip out your life. And that happens. And listen, all of us are guilty of it. I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes, you know, nobody, we're all human here in that struggle. And so I'm not here to sit here and dictate to anybody that, you know, just because you do this, it makes you a bad person. No, it doesn't make you a bad person. It's just, but you have to be cognizant and aware of how your relationships are and what you are needing and looking for out of your relationships. Some people aren't looking for much. Some people don't even want to have relationships, which is a real tragedy. I think you lose community and you lose that sense of becoming more when you isolate yourself. But I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just here to tell you about things. I'm just here to share with y'all some lessons and thoughts that can help maybe bring you to better for you, to a better fruition. Because I still believe you can be a better human being. And I'll say that every day, and I'll say that every stream too. I still believe that you are an amazing person and that you deserve the best of the best and that no one should take that away from you. And that if you have a deficiency or you're struggling with something, you deserve and have the right to work through it. And you deserve and have the right to be heard. And you have the deserve, and you deserve to have the rights to be treated as an equal, not lesser than. Anybody who tries to treat you lesser than should be shot. I mean, maybe not physically shot, but definitely shot out your life. If you get my drift, y'all. Okay. Okay. The fourth measurement of emotional intelligence is empathy. This is the one most people kind of struggle. This is the real struggle right here. A lot of us either have too much empathy, meaning our, we, we, we're known as the bleeding hearts types. Empathy, um, same for bleeding hearts types are also known affectionately as highly sensitive persons. Um, we, and by the way, HSPs are not snowflakes. A highly sensitive person and a snowflake are not the same concept. And we'll talk about that later when we talk about stereotypes, which may be, which is going to be in two weeks. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about stereotyping in two weeks and what that looks like. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. Anyway, as we're talking more about, um, so sympathy and empathy. So, and remember, we talked about this last week. Empathy is not the, oh, I feel, you know, is a, I feel for you. What can I do to help you? to help you and walk with you in it. Not, oh, I feel for you, let me take all your problems. Let me take your problems on as my own. No, 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 that's different. That's sympathy. Empathy is, I feel where you are and I honor you where you are. What can I do to support you in that? Okay, difference, okay? Boom. So, so when we're measuring empathy and emotional intelligence, that means how good are you at that statement I just gave you? Are you the type of person who's really good at like, you know, listen, I don't know what I can do, but whatever I can do, I'm here, homie. Those are, that's a great example of empathy. Or are you the person who's kind of like, you see someone struggling and you do anything and everything in your power not to talk to them? Because, because I don't know why. 
or because oh and here's my favorite reason why most people who suck at empathy kind of try to avoid it it's because they go i don't want to try and process those feelings you can't process your feelings that's a failure of self-awareness and self-regulation which is the reason which means those two things failing you means empathy is going to fail you food for thought and the fourth the fifth and final is your motivations this is where we call this is where i infamous, infamously say we check our intentions actually a friend of mine said this and i just stole it from her and i hope one day she writes a book about it so i can be like this person was the person who inspired check your own intentions check your own intentions means via means what is motivating you to behave in the ways you're behaving are there extenuating circumstances and what are those extenuating circumstances and what do they look like do they look like do they look like you're just react overreacting to something because of what somebody said are you not reacting because you refuse to acknowledge their feelings or wanting to process feelings because that's a big thing that's a very much painful thing in, tw in 2019 that nobody wants to admit um do we want do you have the is your emotional intelligence is your situation based on is your motivations good are your motivations bad do you want are you just trying to do something so you can get something out of somebody these are all things we have to validly ask ourselves and we have to tough lovingly ask ourselves these questions too because if we don't ask them we're setting ourselves up for massive failures massive failures you guys okay okay so how do we apply now wait actually we're not going to talk about this <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about the other, dark, what I call the dark side to emotional intelligence, and it's called emotional manipulation. Emotional manipulation is where one person uses your uses not only their emotions but your emotions as a form of controlling the reactions and or actions of somebody else or themselves even. This one's hard because, you know, the path to hell is paved with good intentions, as the saying goes. <laughs> and it's it's legit true even today that the, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions and I don't think I get this done at far because I don't have any okay I wish I could use it I wish we could get the old school the, the fall of 76 power armor stations miscellaneous note uh, but that's not what we're talking about today okay um emotional so emotional manipulation also consequently means that a person is willing and usually does do this has uses their emotions or or lack thereof as a way of dictating to somebody how they should behave in real life now this is the big no-no that parents do all the time they'll withhold from their kids they'll do terrible things they'll say oh so and so oh my kid is being like this oh my kid oh you should do this or you should do that and it listen emotional manipulation to get what you want never works it may work for a minute I'll, okay i'll be fair it may work for about 2.5 seconds and then the truth comes out and it turns into a rough ugly fight and do we really need that kind of game in the in 2019 no 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 nah y'all we ain't got time for that actually I think a kid. I'll just have to create a step for it. Um, I don't like talking about emotional manipulation. Not because I struggle with this, but because this has actually recently happened to me. And it's a sore subject because it leads to... It, <laughs> It's tough. It's tough. And it's and what sucks more is that it's sometimes really hard to detect. Um so so let me give you all a short version, a short real life example. I had a friend, let me rephrase this. My ex-boyfriend was one is as much as I hate to say this, an emotional abuser. He doesn't mean it. And maybe one of these days I'll forgive him for it, but he does what he does because no one's ever taught him that there's a better way to get what you want that does not involve manipulating others. How did this manipulation look like? Well, this manipulation 
nine out of ten times a person uses emotional manipulation as a way of avoidance and as a way of a avoidance of processing their own feelings and using their and having their own emotional intelligence and or used as a way to pacify or cover up a deficiency in a relationship what do these example deficiencies look like well hypocrisy is the biggest I'm holding you to this standard, but don't you dare hold that standard to me. If I hear one more person in my life say that, I will fracking fight them. Real talk. Because you can't hold yourself to one standard and others to another. We ain't got time to be living, to try to be living in the truth and practicing it. We don't have two lives. We only have one. So if we're seeking the truth and living in that truth, we need to be living it all the way once in our one single lives, okay? That's not your space to be sitting here trying to make some shh up. Mm -mm. No, 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 y'all. No. Shame is another form of how this can man emotional manipulation fans out. My, my, the, the ex-boyfriend in question used shame to a very, uh, to an unintentionally obscene amount. And when, and then when called out for it, he denied the whole situation. What did this shame, what does this shame look like? So shame can easily look like Pat. My infamous favorite part is power shaming, where I will do this for you if you do that for me. So what happened between us was, if you proceed to lose another 50 pounds, I will go out with you and can call you my girlfriend. When really, that's not how that works. That's never been how it works. It's never how it should work. It's never will be how it works. So don't believe whatever hype you're hearing. No man should ever have to put terms on a relationship. Same with women. Ladies, this is us too. Ladies, if we be sitting here saying, hey, we need our men to be A, B, C, D, E, yeah, we got to be balanced about that, too. And we can't shame a man into getting what we want. We can't do that. It's a failure in its own right. There is a difference between shaming somebody and calling them out, which is a different, which we'll talk about in a second. But when you're calling out somebody, you got to be calling them out in love. If you're calling them out to make them feel bad, or you're calling them out to just make yourself look better or feel better about yourself that never ends well no kind of way an emotional manipulation also looks like a form of the silent treatment i this has happened to me this happened to me and i've seen this happen to too many people where a person will intentionally play that silent game to an obscene long amount of time thereby triggering an emotional response from the other party so a silent treatment that could go on for weeks how many of y'all been through that probably a few of you were, or a silent treatment where they go, I don't want to talk about it. I refuse to talk about it. And you're therefore pushing and therefore they're suppressing the pressing an issue of, and needs of it. That's a form of silent treatment. Um, dishonesty, meaning they're manipulating you because they're already being dishonest in the first place. That happens. A fear of reaction is also what happens. Now, a fear of reaction is fair. We are not in control of other people's reaction to how we behave. It's correct. This is correct. However, I add the caveat of if you have done something hurtful and you refuse to accept responsibility for that hurtful, you are responsible for the hurt that you've caused somebody else. And, and whatever that looks like is what you have to take. So some people will use emotional manipulation to not have to deal with that. What does that look like? Well, here's my favorite. My personal favorite is, I didn't tell you about these items or these things because I was afraid of how you react, how you would react to it. My ex had a love, loved to not tell me things because he was afraid of how I reacted. But the fact of the matter is, those were things that needed to be said. And he refused to send because he was afraid of how I would react to them. And then when they came out, he got the reaction he knew he was afraid of. Whereas if he had honestly been real and honest and fair and just and trustworthy and not holding me to a double standard, the reaction would have probably been a lot better. This happens. And this happens to men and women, okay? So ladies, so uh, ladies, we know you be doing, ladies, I know we do this too. Um, I, I watch too many of our friends sit there and just emotionally flip somebody via guilt or shame or even out of just fear because they don't want to they they'll wait to the point of tears to say something fear of reaction is also a form of waiting to the point of tears to say something and that is no we talked about this yesterday we last week don't do that 
You shouldn't be waiting to the point in tears to say what you need to be saying and doing what you need to be doing. So don't. Lack of empathy, of course, is a form too. I don't care about it. And the two big ones that are actually hugely dangerous are gaslighting and abuse. If a person is emotionally uh, manipulating you as a form of permanent control to abuse you and to take advantage of you, it is not ever okay. You have every right to leave. You need to do what you need to do to leave. And anybody who supports that person when the truth comes out, shame on them. Shame on them. Sorry, I hate to say that and hate to be heartless and ruthless about that and have people sit here and go, well, you know, there's two sides to every story. There is. But a person being abused, there is no two sides of that story. That person was being abused. And that person who was, the, the person abused in question has the right to speak up and say something and do something. And if it didn't go the way you wanted that to go, well, too darn bad. Maybe you shouldn't have been abusing them in the first place. And gaslighting is a trigger, is a infamous trigger of said abuse. Meaning you use, gaslighting, for those of you who don't understand what gaslighting is, gaslighting is a, is a way where you say, it's like, it goes like this usually. Well, you believe, you said this, this, this. I never said this, this, and this. I don't know where you got that information from. Something I had to do at certain points in the journey of my bad relationship was I literally started writing everything down. I started writing and sharing, this is what you said. This is what I have. This is where you're going. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves and each other here. And even then, even with proof, even with legitimate argumenting and argumentation and documentation, he would still say it's not his fault. At what point do you stop accepting responsibility for your behavior? Because the answer is you never stop accepting responsibility for your behavior. You have to accept your responsibility for your behavior, whether you like it or not. And nine out of 10 times we don't like it. You know why we don't like it? Because we have, that means we have to acknowledge to ourselves and to the world that we didn't, that we didn't fucked up somewhere. And no one ever wants to acknowledge they fuck up somewhere. Real talk. Like, that's not something we do. That's not something we want to do. That's not who we are. So the ramifications of emotional manipulation can go twofold. First, it affects the other person to the point of sanity breaking sometimes. Some people get to the point where they, they, they turn into the crazy one. And then everyone kind of looks at them and goes, the fuck's wrong with them? Surprise, it's not actually a really hard definition. Somebody got hurt somewhere or someone has done something to cause harm to someone. And I'm in the wrong mirror. It's really simple. Right, right. So then why is that an issue? So why is it really hard for people to sit here and understand that, you know, when a person breaks, let me put it like this, every person breaks. Real talk, everyone breaks. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what that argue, whatever your bullshit arguments may go. Even the strong break, if you give us enough, if you put us through enough. And when I say you put person a person through enough, it means you put them through the emotional ringer, you make them feel like they're less than, you treat them like garbage, you gaslight them and you abuse them, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you, the whole kit and effing caboodle that makes society awful. Okay, all those things can eventually cause permanent emotional damage to somebody. I have a friend who, because their ex gave them such bad emotional silent treatment, every time somebody gives them the silent treatment about something, they freak out. Like they turn into literal like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And it gets terrifying. They'll start hyperventilating and doing all that crazy stuff. And for the longest time, I didn't fully understand why they would do that and what the need of that was until that actually happened to me. And then when I, and then when that truth came to my own life and to my own lives, I realized, so we're not as crazy as everyone makes us out to be. It's just, we've been abused to the point where people have decided that where, where the only way we can be ourselves is by coming out and being loud and being painful and being, you know, not what society demands of us. And it's hard because 
And you know what? Every guy, and, I, and I'd hate to put this to guys, but I am going to put this to guys. The next time you, you look around at a crazy girl and you say, that bitch is crazy, you might want to stop and think about, well, what makes her crazy? Is it, is it something you have done? Is it something somebody else has done? Has it been something that, you, that may still be unresolved in her life or your life? And if you're not willing to deal with that, then you need to shut your mouth and go away. Girl talk here. If you are not willing to walk with somebody because that's just not your jam, that's fine. But then you need to step up and get out. Don't be in somebody's life if you ain't really ready to to, ha to take on, you know, being a part of their life. Because guess what? Contrary to popular belief, it's not all cake and roses. Life is not all cake and roses. <laughs> I wish it was some days. Boy, do I wish it was. It can make my life a little easier and, and fucking free cake, right? But that's not how this goes, nor will it, and nor should it either. So I always put this to people and I always say, listen, if you're not gonna be willing and open to walking with them, it's okay to step aside. It's okay to say, I love you, homie, but I'm a walk. I gotta, I gotta walk, I can't handle it. But what's wrong is sitting there and acting like you don't care when you really, or saying you care when really in truth you don't. So don't be like those people, okay? Um, I always put it like this too. And I'm gonna add an additional caveat. There are some women and men who have been emotionally abused and they're trying to heal. Healing comes in different stages and it's a process. So sometimes you're gonna, and you're, and you, first of all, there's never gonna be a real time where a person is fully healed. The only time we're gonna be fully healed is when we die and get the hell up out of here. That's the only time we're fully healed and free of all the pains and sufferings of life. That's not a religious statement. That's just a real statement, okay? So if you're thinking you're going to just get on up out of here, you're just going to get up out of feelings and get up out of having emotional intelligence and shit like that. I'm here to tell you right now that is not how it works and it's never going to work like that. And I'm sorry it's never going to work like that. But we have to make sure that we're being real with ourselves and each other here. You want to make sure, friends... Friends, it's, you know, you gotta be ready to handle that. And you gotta be ready to support that person through whatever it is they're going through. And if you're not that person, if you can, then you need to either walk up out of their lives or be real with them and say, listen, I can't handle that piece for you. My ex learned that lesson a little too late. He realized I can't handle these things. And the reason he couldn't handle these things was because no one ever taught him how to handle his own trauma, let alone try to sorry try to subvert and or um heal from help somebody else walk, walk with theirs because he never knew how to walk with his own and that's really sad but at the same time there are things this goes back to what i was saying earlier if you are lacking in something there is help i have some links down below in the panels but at the same time there's other places you can go there shoot it can even be something simple as a co getting a coach and a mentor to help you work through the smaller details and the working details it can be as simple as that it can be as grand as yeah you made me need a therapist and there's no shame in therapy everyone said sharon try to make therapy some like really terrible like stigmatized bullshit thing and the fact of the matter is if we don't have therapy we're all doomed you know everyone needs a little bit of therapy in their life everyone that's not that's not just for shits and giggles that i just said that for too it's more a this is how we some, sometimes people the world doesn't teach us the things that therapy actually can some you know the world doesn't teach us those things i wish they did that'd be nice but i'm also very well aware that society doesn't wants to treat mental illness like it's a sin against god instead of what it is which is a which is a form of illness. It's a struggle to survive in a person with a mental illness or even to survive some to survive with a life post trauma is a daily process. And we'll talk about trauma in three weeks because trauma is a really big subject and I want to actually have a friend maybe come in and talk with us about it. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But I want you guys to know that if your journey to date 
unfortunately involves trauma that you're not alone and you need and it's okay to get it treated and if your struggles are to the point where you are hurting other people because of your inability to handle it yourself your own shit then it's time it's time to have the big address conversation of well maybe i do need to go seek some help and there's no sin in that and don't let anyone tell you there is. If anybody sits here and says to you, male or female. So, dudes, this is definitely also for you. Gentlemen, if you have mental health issues or you're suffering from struggling from trauma in your past, get that shit fixed. Because guess what? Your wife is, or your ladies are not designed to be those people for you. Now, there are some people who have gotten lucky and that ended up working out. But that is way too far and rare and few in between. So don't play that game. Don't Women are not supposed to be rehabilitation centers for men and their past traumas. Men need to man up and do their own shit too. And there are definitely tons of bro-friendly, as I jokingly say, bro-friendly ways of, you know, getting the help you need without emasculating yourself. And if, and if that's a thing and that needs to be something we need to talk about, leave notes. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it either on our discords or on the discord or Patreon or even he leaving a note here in the chat. Leave a note. Tell us that this is something we need to be talking about too. Because we don't know if we don't show. How do we know better if we, how can we do better if we don't know better, right? Right. Okay. Now, enough of the dark side. Let's talk about how do we put this into our practical lives? Well, let's be honest with ourselves and each other here. Um, Vanilla Ice actually put it best in, in Ice Ice Baby, which is stop, look, collaborate, and listen. I know, really? I just pulled an 80s song out of the way to justify this, but it works. Stop. Sometimes this is really hard to do is to actually stop Especially when you're in the heat and the thick of something, especially if it's a conflict issue too. But you need to take, even if it is a, you know what, let's go, let's, let's break from this. Let's take a 10 minute break or a 15 minute break or 20 minute break and talk about and allow ourselves a chance to process what's going on here and then come back and go forward. That it, it can easily be something simple as that. It can also be a two second stop and go. <sighs> See, when you stop, you allow two things to happen. A, you allow self-awareness to come into play and give yourself a chance to fully assess what's going on in your head, okay? And you allow self-regulation. So if you're already really hot or really like anxious or really like Ugh, about something, you have that opportunity to take that stop and get the space you need to get yourself back in order, okay? Um, look, look means use these two eyes or or hear or smell or taste or use your senses to look around and see what's going on many times we're all caught up this is this cannot be the furthest you see okay put this sideways so that way you see you cannot see if you can only see past the edge of your nose that's a problem that is you have to be able to look around and gauge your situation because Living in honesty also means that sometimes you will have to adjust your honesty accordingly. You can still be real, but sometimes there's a difference between being gently real and brutally real. There's a difference between being salty and being skeptical. Sense? Sense. Okay. So that's what look looks like. Meaning you're assessing as you're taking your stop, you're looking around. You're seeing how everybody's feeling. Are they feeling tired? Are they feeling frustrated? Are they emotionally, are they in distress? If they're in emotional distress, you really need to take a real minute and stop. And look not only at them, but at yourself. Am I portraying, am I behaving in a way that allows flow, proper flow of communication and emotion to go, come and, come and go? If that's a no, son, then you gotta stop and you gotta think about that, okay? Uh, decorations. Pause. <clears throat> I'm gonna come get these new coral stuff. Okay. Oh yeah, not all of it opens up. I hate when that happens. Anyway. Let's collaborate. Steve Covey came up with a really great way of utilizing, it's from Seven Habits of Healthy People, or Habits of Highly Successful People. Highly Successful People. And he says, I feel... I think, I think I feel I want or need. It depends on what's going on. Depending if, if it's want 
it's something you're looking for in somebody or if it's a need it's like no this is a boundary situation okay so i think everybody in this room is looking like they're a little agitated i feel also that same mutual agitation and i would want us to take a minute to step back and look at this situation and come back maybe in five ten minutes with a clear head and a better way and with maybe some new ideas and solutions to solve whatever conflict we're going through that's what collaborate and then guess what you get the consensus from the rest of the room it's like rest of the room's consensus is, you know what that's a good idea and cool and listen there's always time for a five minute break i don't care what your deadlines are there's always that time to take a five minute break and go guys let's step back and come back to this even if it is five minutes it can be a day too it can be multiple days however that looks for you and your team okay so there's that and then listening listening not only with your ears and your eyes but with your heart and with people around you and what what, what everybody else is displaying here's why i say that you have to listen with more than just your ears listening with more you can hear something someone could say something to you but then you look at them square in the face and they're actually showing you something else they're actually trying to tell you something else but they're not really in the right ballsy position to tell you what's up with that and and in those cases listen first of all that happens so i'm not in it, it does it happens to the best of us and there ain't nothing i can do about it right but at the same time it's important that we listen to best even if we don't agree and i always say that we need to be listening and honoring people even if we don't agree in fact sometimes it's better we don't always agree because how else are we going to find new solutions and new innovations to problems and situations if we're only listening to ourselves eh? Eh. why am i sharing emotional intelligence in the end because the fact of the matter is although last week we talked last week we talked about the three effective aspects three aspects to effective communication and all three of these aspects only come to full fruition if we are practicing emotional intelligence to the to the best of our abilities and and or as well as honing those said abilities to the best of our abilities this is an amateur's night world is not amateur's night as much as we wish it were certain things sure we can go ahead and say that they are amateur's night because they're my favorites right um but for the most part most of the time no it is not amateur's night you you need to be talking to people we need you need to be sharing with people we need to be collaborating with each other we need to be talking to each other this isn't just a thing we do for kicks and giggles contrary to popular beliefs everyone sits here and tries to make it like it is something we should do but in the end the only real thing we should be doing is collaborating with each other and trying to make the world a better place right yeah yeah most days okay good But the only way we can do that is if we truly understand and know our own feelings. Now, here's some additional FAQs. If you are having issues with actually determining what your feelings are, as much as I hate to do it and tell everyone to do this, get you a journal, get you a notebook, and write that shit down. I have a daily planner, this isn't it, but I have a daily planner and every day I write um, a couple of things. First, I measure my depression and what's going on with me and my personal depression and what may have triggered that. But secondly, I'm also measuring what have I been feeling that could be tr triggering that. I was feeling pissed off today because of X, Y, Z. Or I was feeling f confused and frustrated because Mercury's in retrograde. I don't know. You, 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 but y'all get what I'm saying. Or I feel grateful because this, this, and this happened. Or I'm happy because these things happened. Or I'm at peace because A, B, Z. Insert continuous feelings here. There is. <laughs> I'm going to actually put it up on my personal website. I'm actually going to put it up on our Facebook and our Discord. But if you're actually looking, if you don't know how to verbalize feelings, if that's not your jam, um, there is a list of over, I think right now it's 100 feelings that you can feel. And they're broken up by happy, sad, angry, whatever. And then they allow you to personally verbalize how you're feeling. Sometimes, sometimes we can say we're mad, but we're not really mad. We're more, we're more frustrated than mad. Sometimes we say we're upset when really we're distressed or we're in grief or we're sad 
And we just don't know it because we just don't know how to verbalize it to people. And that's okay. Knowledge is, knowledge is power. And that's the whole name of the game at this point is to make sure that we truly are aware of our own power and our own abilities to be powerful in this life. You know, if you, uh, another frequently asked question that I'm going to get is what, okay, so I'm practicing all these things and certain situations ain't going no better. What do I do? Well, we can go all the way back to last week's talk where we're talking about honesty, empathy, and vulnerability. If you're practicing emotional intelligence, those three aspects should already be in full scale play. If they are not in full scale play, you need to look and see where it's not. Are you being honest with this person? Are you honoring them and walking with them in whatever they're going through? Are you not afraid to share, to share in the feelings that they're having and be vulnerable with them? If the answer is no to any one of those three things, you need to stop and take a look. Sometimes we're lacking vulnerability because we can't trust. Sometimes we're lacking empathy because we have not felt what they felt, have ever felt. Sometimes we are not honest because we're dishonest. Or my favorite, you're not lacking honesty. You have a double standard of what honesty is. We will have to have that conversation eventually, y'all. But that's not up on, high up on the list. But the point is, if those three pieces are not in sync, then you may want to start there and use your, and use emotional intelligence to help figure out where the space is. If all three things are in play and it's still wrong, then you then it is then it comes time to have boundaries conversation, which is. All right, I have done everything in my power to keep this relationship on the up and up and good. But these still, these issues and concerns are continuing to be a problem in our relationship. And if they don't change, then we've got to go. And listen, it's hard to let go of friends, especially friends that you may have actually, that you truly genuinely care about. But sometimes people... You can only give so many free passes for shitty and unacceptable behavior. And that's just the end of that. Emotional intelligence requires that you are aware of your shitty behaviors. And that if someone calls you out on said shitty behaviors, that you are aware enough and ability and have enough self-regulation skills to begin to process how to not be that way. Unless the argument is, is I don't want to, I, I don't care. This is how I'm going to be. And this is me. Anybody who sits, okay. Emotional intelligence is also not the argument of this is just who I am and you just have to deal with it. It is not that. It'll never be that. Emotional intelligence requires you to be consistently growing and learning more about you. And if you have come to the headspace of this is who I am, fuck all the rest. I've got bad news for you bears. That's not going to go. Not only is that not going to go, but more likely people are going to go because real successful and happy people don't stick to a fixed mindset. When you say this is the way I am and you just have to take me or leave me for that, you've basically closed your doors. There's no room for growth. Now, sometimes in life, that's going to have to just be how it goes. Sometimes you really are going to have to say, this is it. Like, I'm sorry, but this is all I can offer. And if that means this ends, then this ends. If it dies, it dies, right? That's how it goes. Vice versa here. Sometimes it also means that a person who's hard-heartened may need to stop and really see if they are hard-heartened. And why are they hard-heartened? Some people never really ever fully learn full emotional intelligence. They learn how to cope with their lack and deficiencies. But lack, but, but learning to cope and actually truly being, being fully aware of yourself and your emotions and mastering. And there, by the way, there's no such thing as mastering. I'll take that back. There's no such thing as mastering. But understanding and acknowledging your feelings. You never ever fully master them. Trust me. You never really fully master them. There's always going to be that one or two day. There's always going to be those two or three days. You're just going to slip and F it all up. And guess what? We're all human here. We're going to do it. And you're supposed to do it. Okay. So don't sit here and hold you to that kind of impossible standard because why? Why would I do that to you? And anybody who sits here and tries to hold you to the unrealistic human standards, 
you may want to stop and think about whether or not you want to have them in your life or not because you don't need that kind of like anxiety in your life you don't need people sitting here trying to dictate to you how you should live and how you know how everything how let me take that back every person has a choice in their decisions okay so you choose to behave in the way you're behaving everyone has a choice also to accept bullshit or not accept bullshit or not accept you hurting them if a person says you hurt, oh, yeah, which also brings up a really good point. If a person tells you after, if a person emotionally says to you, hey, you're emotionally hurting me, it doesn't matter anymore. Your, 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 oh, I'm sorry I hurt you, this is why I hurt you argument is completely fucking invalid. Don't ever do that. <sighs> I've seen, ugh, that happen, has happened to me too many times with too many friends and even exes. Or they're like, well, I'm sorry I hurt you, that was never my intention. Bitch, that's not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> I hate to be real like that, but let me just be real. And you, I'm trying to comb down on the swearing because I got some feedback about it. But let me just go on and tell you that if your argument is, I'm sorry I hurt you, it was never my intention. Sure, I accept your apology, but bitch, that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is a change. What? And many people who have been hurt, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you... The apology me apologies without actions are just manipulation somebody the internet put this out there and if you look and I'll put that meme out there on my Facebook so that way y'all can see what I'm talking about but an apology without change is just manipulation meaning if they just say hey I'm sorry I never meant to hurt you but they go on ahead and keep on fucking hurting you guess what they're manipulating you and you have the right to leave and, oh, and or call them out for what's going on. I don't buy that whole story hype of everyone sitting here saying, oh, well, you know, you could have just left. Yeah, you're right. I could have just left. I still reserve the right to leave at my own pleasure and leisure. But fact of the matter is nothing's going to get better. That person is going to continue to hurt other people. And sure, that's not always my problem. But you know what also isn't my is. But you know what is my problem? What allowing that to just happen? That's my problem. I'm not about to just sit here and let you continue to abuse other innocent people. That's where justice takes its turn, y'all. This is where we start to have the discussions of, well, you know, do we really want to discuss this or not? And sometimes we have to stand up and say, no, what you're doing is not okay. Please stop. Or I'm going to tell somebody. And don't think that's not a thing either. I know plenty of people who will be more than happy to tell you straight up to your face that you're abusing them. And then if you sit there and act like you're going to be dumb and silly about it, they will tell everybody. Now, is that okay to be kind of putting everybody on blast? No, not necessarily. But abuse is abuse in any of its forms. And people who are sitting here trying to make that about, like, justify it? Mm -mm. You can go somewhere you can go the fuck somewhere else okay now that's not a form of emotional intelligence that's just abusing somebody and trying to gain from them instead of grow from them don't be those kind of people okay y'all be better than that you deserve to be better than that if you are looking for more resources on um, what emotional intelligence looks like um, we are going to be releasing the handout for this um, tomorrow um, I don't have any patrons right now who get it today, so until we get that settled, we get that settled, right? Um, we, of course, it, and so that kind of ends tonight's con today's conversations. You know, of course, I'm always looking for more information, and if any of you have questions, you can always put it into the chat before, now, and or after this. So I'm still watching the chats even after we're done talking here, and you are more than welcome to continue the, the discussion or if you have an extenuating question that it's completely okay for you to sit and want to have that conversation and I'm more than happy to have it either on our discord or our facebooks or even on our patreons it's it's all for you guys to become better people because I can I still believe that and I believe you are that and you can be that so I'm done talking <laughs> this camp is kind of partially done actually I'm not necessarily sure if I'm feeling all the colors on it. Um, but I got plenty of beds. And I need to put her... Oh, I know what I need to put in here. We need to go on ahead and put in... 
this. Oh, and we need to put defense. That's what we're missing. That's why I kind of left some of this extra space going on here. Did it, did you not wire? Nope. Screw that. Okay. Now you wire. Now you wired. Um, defenses. So we get people from all three corners. So I want a guard here, a smaller one down here, and hold on, yeah. e go over here. And then Um, turrets, 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 turrets. Um, so I thank you guys for coming and listening, and I appreciate you guys coming to check out uh, the videos every week. Um, right now we're actually, um, it's really nice. Um, coming soon though, we are gonna leave uh, Twitch with these. These are actually gonna go straight back over to YouTube because I like YouTube. I like YouTube for actual building up conversations because then I can pre plan it and then I can also add information. Um, in the descriptions or I can add um, additional information or I can and or um, we can do other things with it that we can't normally do um, with Twitch I mean, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys any lies I am working towards affiliate status not today but eventually I you know I kind of have what I call a, a six-month plan and part of the six-month plan also includes making sure that we have what we need for um, affiliate and that we're growing everything out right and if you're interested in supporting the mission or if you want to hear more because if we get more donors and supporters I'll make more of these um, you know our donations tab is now officially open through Streamlabs so you can get your monies um, so you can drop tips all day every day 24-7 I don't even care you're more than welcome to leave donations at any time and they will always be really appreciated. Um, we do have a Patreon also that has just been recently opened up and we're gonna actually start pro promoting it in future upcoming streams and upcoming chats where it's all we're gonna be doing is that. And um, at the same time, did someone change my category? Oh, somebody did, oh no, we put this in follow up, okay, we did. Um, and going from there additionally we want to make sure that everybody has what they want and or need so I'm very excited to you know talk about that and yeah wow this turned out pretty nice actually actually I'm gonna move this over here what you guys don't know is in a minute I'm gonna go find some cooking oil and um, put a cookie David because I just have the coffee maker and I really like a donut maker um you know the best part about this is now we talk about I know you can just get a silicone Joe's shop with actual things I'm um, we're not gonna put that in here we're gonna put that in in a what's gonna call it but I wanted a trading stand just so that way we always have ongoing business going on in here and yeah I think we're ready to go I got 100 power 100 defense ready to keep on building on up as we get more people and oh hey more people are already showing up i love when that happens when there's more people showing up and yeah, yeah, it's great right and you know what i'm absolutely hating these so uh we're done chatting and i'm just gonna sit here and finish building out for the next 20 minutes so if you still are watching and you want to talk about other things that have nothing to do with what we've just been talking about for the last hour that is totally fine it's totally fine but if not, you just want to sit here and watch me build out the rest of the settlement while enjoying the music. That is okay, too. I'm going to turn it up, actually, a little bit. So you all get a little more. Um, because, you know, music's always great. I don't care what anybody says. Music is fabulous. And we're just trying to grow and build and be a better community. And I'm... Uh... Ooh, someone just asked me this on our Discord. Um, am I going to be planning on doing any future um, talks on certain types of mental illness? No, not no, not really. Um, and the reason I said I'm not going to be doing that is more I'm not a licensed health professional, so I wouldn't be very well equipped in handling those discussions. 
Um, I may, I do have a couple of friends who may be interested in joining us and doing a collab when we get ready to talk about those things. But as of right now, the answer is currently no. Um, um, it doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean no forever. It just means no right now because we're still starting up. We're still a startup. <laughs> we're still a startup. You uh, stream team here and yeah. Um, we are also looking for team members to eventually join the team. Um, the I'm call I don't know what we're calling. I think we're calling ourselves the Adventurers team. The Adventurers team for now, and then just get ready to join a community to a group of streamers who believe in positivity, mental health, inclusionism, diversity. Um, you know, all the things Twitch ain't, <laughs> we're about. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. I love you Twitch streamers, but trust me, I, I be watching y'all streams just as much. And some days I just be looking around going, mm, questionable. Questionable. And, I, and that sucks, but a lot. Uh, nope. No, 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 keep them. You just put those out there. Just Hey, settler. I saw like two other settlers, or maybe they came in or they're sleeping. What happened? There's a new person. Yeah, new person. Well, I'll let him actually stay because it's a lot of. Tri There's a lot of crops. I just, I just brought a whole bunch of crops in here. Um, and then we've got one person doing security, which is fine with me. I don't mind having a settler. Most of the time when you do stuff like this, they automatically assign themselves, especially when you've already like pre-built it. So it's always kind of good to know. Um, something I always do besides take bottle caps is I'm the kid who takes any kind of food that's already here. And the reason being is I just go on ahead and I take it to the next camp, wherever that is. And I don't think there's any going on. Oh, there's some tato. I don't necessarily even know that much tato, but we'll take some of that. And I think that's it for now. Cause this is originally a tato spot. Um, so. You know, having some people here is always good. And then we do have one person doing, being our route person. And so now we have plenty of, plenty of water and things. Oh, hey, oh. I really want water. Oh, but that's not how that works in this game. Anyway, does it? Which is fine. All right. Now, uh, we'll do a quick save real quick. I want to see where we are settlement wise and sizes and who needs to go where if that's what needs to be done. Uh, there's only so much I can put in Kingman's Alley and Zimonja doesn't have any defense in it. Uh, Alpha Zimonja will be next week's build. So before y'all get super unexcited, stay tuned. That's coming soon. Um, yeah, Sanctuary's got some people. And Grey Garden doesn't have any. Grey Garden. Oh yeah, Grey Garden. Craig Carden is run by robots. We don't need beds. That's still a little confusing to me, but that's where we're at. We're gonna head over. Actually, I actually wanna head over. Oh wait, we can level up now. I don't have any sound on, so I always forget. Like, oh, because we don't have any sound on, we have to like look. Black Widow. Um. Go ahead and put that intelligence in there. And then, uh, oh, I need to go to a trading shop. Maybe we'll go to Diamond City. Talking about city. Diamond City. <laughs> Sorry, I, I totally went 80s on y'all today, but that just happens sometimes, and you, we just gotta go with it. Uh, we are gonna go back. Mm, Starlight requires too much work. Overland. Ooh, my favorite. So for those of you who don't know, some of my favorite camps are Overland Station, uh, Jamaica Plain, um, uh, Taffington Boathouse. There's something about Taffington Boathouse. It's just really cool, and it's right by the water. So I'm, I'm always, and I personally am a girl who likes to live and work near places with water, which is funny because I'm a fire sign. So I guess that's maybe just my counterbalance. I don't know. Science worked that out, y'all. Uh, actually, we can just go right on into fast traveling. It doesn't cost any caps because I don't play that game here. God, Fallen City 6. Can we, like, not? I need fast travel to get, like, dumped. That cap sink, man. Um, 
this. So, I'm going to say miscellaneous thing you talk about at, on streams is this is the uh, pumpkin spice uh, cream brew and I always like to say this is the cold or excuse me the cold brew version of pumpkin spice and I always say you know what you can fight me if you want to but this is the hipster version of the pumpkin spice latte and you know it's true cause it is um <laughs> how it goes um, don't get me wrong, I still love me some basic ass pumpkin latte spice latte. It's just who I is. Alright, here we go. I need protection. <laughs> I'm a horrible person, sorry. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got. Uh, weapons. I'm gonna just sell off all this extra stuff. I don't need that. I that. Everybody always wonders, how are you making these caps? Easy. I just do it like this. Sell off everything you got that you don't need. Because it makes your life, it actually makes your life a boat ton easier. And then I'm the kid who, while I'm here, like, buys, I don't need a power of frames. I don't need that either. <laughs> um, hold on, let's take a look at our, uh, our ammo casing. I don't need any ammo or any 10. But you know what I do need now? I need some 50. I need a boat ton of 45. And do you have any five? Five millimeters. No. Okay. I really need five millimeter. Um, just like that, y'all. I'm money. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot, I forgot to sell these off, too, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, I get that. And that. Mm, I'm gonna keep some of those because I'm actually. Uh, actually, that's not bad. Apparel. Mm, no, I want all the coffee tins. You guys still have a whole bunch of stuff? Just a little bit? No, we actually use Radix in this game. I don't use Psycho. I need Jet right now. I'd be already getting off that off. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, I'm getting rid of that. Uh, nope, we keep all fusion forms. We have that mini nuke. Um, we have all these plasma cartridges too. You can't have my shotgun shells because that's money. Cool! Done. Except. That's how <laughs> Y'all want a secret about Fallout 4? That's the secret. It doesn't work on 76 for Jack nothing. I always get a little frustrated about that too. I'm like, why? Why does it not work for us? But then I got me a boat ton of ammo for my 45s. Um, because I needed some 45 ammo real hard in that life. And some 50 cal. Um, because as you can see, shotguns, 45s. Right? And then my high power minigun is 50s. Also shotguns, flare guns. Another smack. Hmm. Oh, let's quick save now. Save often! Because um, the thing I've learned about Fallout 4 as of lately, it's been kind of crashing kind of hard. So, you know, that's just been how that goes. So, you know what, friends? I'm actually going to go ahead and end tonight's, or this afternoon's stream early. Like, only by five minutes. Because I'm the thing about building up conversations, they're always short and sweet. They're actually the shortest of the streams I do. Um... 
because I'm just trying to share with y'all some info and then, then I'm done and we out. So that's <laughs> the way that goes. Um, I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. I will be back on tonight at 9.30 p.m. Hopefully on time. We are going to drop nukes in 76. I said I was going to do it and I've said it for the last four or five episodes now. Now it's time to actually do it and tonight's the night. So come hell and high water, that's what we're doing. So until next time, y'all, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all so much. Leave notes, leave tips, say hi's, goodbyes, whatever. And until next time, friends, keep it classy, not trashy.